Major Lindsay and Africa presents Bouncing Back, conversations about resilience for lawyers. Welcome to Bouncing Back, Resilience for Lawyers. This podcast is brought to you by Major, Lindsay, and Africa, the global leader in legal search and consulting. I'm your host, Rebecca Glatzer. I'm a managing director in the associate practice group at Major, Lindsay, and Africa. In this podcast, I'll speak to successful professionals about the hiccups, bumps, bruises, and setbacks they've experienced in their careers and personal lives, and how they ultimately bounce back from those experiences to thrive. Today, my guest is Ailish Burpee. Ailish is the Associate General Counsel and Vice President of Legal at MailChimp. MailChimp is a global customer engagement and marketing platform for growing small and mid-market businesses. At MailChimp, Ailish oversees the company's internal legal affairs. Her team is responsible for legal compliance, legal operations, employment and immigration, corporate and public affairs, corporate expansion, and policy management. Prior to joining the legal team, Ailish served as the company's Vice President of Human Resources, leading the company's HR functions related to employee benefits and compensation, health and wellness, employee performance and rewards, employee relations, and people metrics. Ailish received her bachelor's degree from the Georgia Institute of Technology and her Juris Doctor from the University of Georgia. She joined MailChimp in 2014, having previously worked as a commercial litigation associate at Cypherth Shaw and as a patent litigation associate at Robbins Kaplan. Ailish, thank you for being here today. Oh, thank you for having me. So excited to talk with you. Absolutely. Well, you made the leap from law firm associate to in-house counsel at a rapidly growing technology startup in a little over five years, and then you managed to switch over to the business side, becoming HR director in a little over two years, and you are now MailChimp's associate general counsel. Um, you know, For many of my candidates that I speak to on a daily basis, your path is something they would strive for. Um, It's been meteoric from where I sit, um, but I also know that it hasn't been without its hiccups. Can you tell us a little bit more about your career path? Absolutely. Um, Thank you for that kind compliment. Uh, You know, when you're in it day to day, it seems it seems normal. It seems uh, just your your regular old story, but uh, certainly was a path that um, both included a lot of luck and taking a little bit of risk. Um, so I started as most uh, folks straight out of law school start. I started with a law firm uh, where I practiced patent litigation for two years. Um, it was a an amazing experience to start there and really uh, get my feet wet with some very, very um, Uh, useful information and uh, I learned how to litigate Uh, but I realized in about two and a half years there that it is a it's a difficult lifestyle being a patent litigator Um, it involved a lot of travel especially since I was based in Atlanta I was traveling to um, different client sites uh, and different sites to actually uh, conduct hearings for pretrial litigation. And I was I was on the road constantly. Um, it was at the time it was fine. I was younger. I didn't have any children. I wasn't taking care of any elderly parents. And so I was able to manage it mostly. But as I looked down my career path, I thought, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can do this for the long term. I, I do want a family one day. Um, and so I decided to make a move and try my hand at commercial litigation. Um, the thought was, well, maybe if I get out of the patent litigation world and try the commercial litigation world, I can be a little more home based, based in Atlanta, maybe perhaps I won't be traveling as much, perhaps it'll be a slightly easier lifestyle. Um, Boy, was I wrong. (laughs) It turns out (laughs) litigation is litigation. Uh, The hours are crazy at um, at most law firms and um, being home based really doesn't take away 
uh, any of uh, the, the hard, hard work that goes into be a being a litigator. So after a few years of, of doing that and discovering that, um, I uh, made the choice to start looking for an in-house position, um, but it wasn't easy. I was only about five years out of law school and um, I was a litigator and a lot of in-house uh, positions aren't geared for litigators. So I heard a lot of no's when I started looking initially. I was, I was too junior or they weren't looking for a litigator. Um, it just wasn't the right fit. But um, I got about a year into my search, I got very lucky and I heard about this opening at this small tech company nobody had ever heard of at the time called MailChimp. Um, they were looking for their second lawyer and um, I, I took the interview and I'm very excited that I did. Um, it was it was a big risk though, ultimately accepting the job um, to do that. I took quite a large paycheck from my from going from uh, the law firm life to to this smaller startup. They they certainly weren't able to afford at the time to match my law firm salary. So I took a risk and I I moved in house and um, I'm so so happy I did. Um, it was it's been a great experience. I've gotten to try my hands at a lot of different things there. Uh, but it was it came with some a lot of rejection at first and um, a little bit of risk taking. Definitely. And I was going to say, you know, I'm impressed with your um, resilience, if you will, in terms of sticking with it, um, because it is traditionally more difficult for litigators to go in house. Um, most of our clients are looking for folks with a transactional background, you know, ideally a corporate MA background. Um, and you stuck with it. You know, some of my candidates, it takes them, you know, years to to to, to make that first leap uh, to get, to go in house. And some folks, you know, after just a few no's, we we lawyers are type A and are used to hearing yeses. We're you know we graduate at the top of our class in various uh, academic endeavors, and many of us do really really well in law school to get to big law. And, um, you know, just hearing two or three no's sometimes causes people to kind of go back into the law firm and say, never mind, like, that's too much uh, work or, you know, I, the, the rejection is too much. Um, for some folks, it's the idea of a giant pay cut um, and they're not at this station in life where they can afford to do that. Um, I was curious what advice you have to uh, law firm lawyers who are interested in making that switch, um, you know, in, in terms of navigating that path. Absolutely. Um, and I couldn't agree more. It's we lawyers tend to be um, folks who have achieved uh, very high status um, over the course of our um, lifetimes and careers. We're usually good at school. Um, we we do well in uh, school, which gets us into an undergrad program. We, we do well in undergrad, which gets us into law school. We're very much used to achieving. And I think the best advice that I can give someone who's looking to um, potentially make a change in their career is really to reframe the idea of rejection. It's important not to take rejection personally and to internalize it. Um, rather, I think a way that you can reframe it is um, reframing it as a, well, this just as wasn't the right opportunity for me. There's been so many times over the course of my career that I've been told no. And then over the years, with the luxury of hindsight, I've been able to look back at that rejection and say, I think I earned, I think I ended up better in the long run, um, having not gone down that path. That path wasn't right for me. Um, it, perhaps it was the universe telling me this isn't this isn't for you. There's something better fitted, better suited for you out there. Um, so it's important to reframe rejection as not internalize it personally. Um, just understand that uh, that wasn't right for you. It's time to move on to the next thing. Um, and in fact, you know, looking back on it now that I am myself a hiring manager and um, I hire for a lot of positions internally, 
often candidates ask me what they could have done better in order to get the job. Um, perhaps candidates that weren't selected for the job. They ask, what could I have done better? What could I have done differently? How can I improve my resume? And what I often tell these candidates and what I want almost everyone to know is that it's often not personal. It's not you. Um, I'm. I, there's nothing that you could have done better or different. The fact of the matter is, is um, I often, I just have one job to offer. I have one job to fill and I have an amazing suite of candidates sometimes. And I just have to pick one. I can only pick one. That's right. Um, and so, yes, yes, it's it's not it's not personal. Um, and I would never want you to stop being you. It's perhaps that the one person that I picked, we had the opportunity to talk about an experience that they had that was maybe slightly more in line with what I think the job is going to do eventually. Um, uh, perhaps I just had to, I just had to pick one person. And so that's, I think that's my re advice is reframe rejection, understand that it's, um, it's less about you and probably more about what the person making a decision has on their plate and, uh, and, and learn to hear no and, and move on and keep going. I think that's great. I mean, I, I love that reframe rejection and not taking it personally. I mean, I think those are key things to kind of uh, take your wax and, and, and keep on going. Um, speaking of sort of like, you know, transitioning, you have done what a lot of, you know, attorneys that I speak to regularly want to do. Many of them say, you know, I want to go in-house, Rebecca, because uh, my my long-term goal is to get inside a company and switch to the business side of the house. Um, and kind of you've, you've sort of bounced back and forth. You've been on the legal side, then you went to HR, and then you moved back to the legal side, which I'm sure has given you a lovely bird's eye view of um, the company. You know, I'm interested in your thought process about that. I mean, it definitely indicates a show of confidence on the part of the company and your skills and your skill set. But I could also imagine some anxiety <laughs> um, in, in going from legal to HR. I, I don't, I, based on what I know about your background, Ailish, I don't think you have a labor and employment background. Um, and so I'm interested to know about that transition and kind of what your, you know, what was going through your mind um, when that opportunity popped up. Absolutely. Well, I think my my path at Mailchimp, um, I think, is a true example about how often careers aren't some well planned path where um, a person laid it all out from the beginning and then took the right step at the right time all along the way. Um, I really veer, view careers as a series of lucky opportunities mixed in with some hard work and some setbacks and some risk. Um, and that's exactly what has happened to me over the course of my last eight years with MailChimp. Um, when I joined MailChimp, I joined as a lawyer on the legal team, the second lawyer in the company. And when I joined, um, MailChimp was a... Um, a smaller company kind of coming out of startup mode and really into scale up mode. Um, but I was able to join and I immediately identify some areas in, uh, for improvement in employment practices. Now, nothing malicious. It was just the nature of the company at the time. Um, and no, I didn't have a labor and employment background. Um, I had come from Seifarth Shaw where the firm as a whole does a lot of labor employment work, but I was actually in the commercial litigation group. Um, and so my knowledge here was somewhat limited to um, learnings that I had done through CLEs, basic knowledge I had from law school, and then and then studying self-study on my own outside of work. But um, I, I started helping with some um, labor and employment practices from the legal side. And um, that eventually morphed into assisting with some of the more traditional HR functions that weren't purely legal, but maybe had a hybrid uh, HR and legal aspect. 
And um, after I did that, I was asked um, if I would consider taking a left-hand turn in my career and um, overseeing the HR function and growing it within MailChimp. And I have to admit, when I was asked this question, um, I was nervous. I, I asked for 24 hours to think about it because I had been a lawyer. I thought I was always going to be a lawyer. I didn't envision myself being an HR professional. Um, I certainly didn't bring that extensive background to the table, but I took the 24 hours to pause and think about it. And I realized that this would be an amazing opportunity um, for me to get closer to the business. And um, instead of purely being a legal advisor to the business, I would actually have the opportunity to make some business decisions myself and be a strategic thinker there. And it was also an opportunity for me to really stretch and grow myself. Um, so I said yes. And I spent four years at MailChimp um, growing and leading the HR function. Um, in addition, I was also overseeing the employment law side of the house. Um, but it was an amazing experience. I'm so thankful that I said yes to that. Um, not only because it allowed me to grow and stretch, but I think it made me a much better lawyer because um, I have seen how difficult it can be to have to take and actually implement and execute on legal advice um, in the real world. And so I know I'm a better lawyer now having had that experience versus um, just practicing law where sometimes you, you're allowed to give the advice and then hand over the execution to someone else. Um, so again, so grateful I did it. Um, it was a bit of luck on my part. It was willing to take that risk and say yes, but it has been, it was an amazing career experience. And now I'm taking what I learned over those four years and really applying it in my legal practice again. I think what an interesting and unique opportunity to kind of bounce back into legal function after doing it. You know, what um, factors or things do you think you know, contributed to your success. Did that did that include mentors, books, um, you know, other things, certain skill sets? Um, you know, because again, I, I think what you've done is, and you've done it very quickly, um, is is the kind of path that I think many lawyers strive for in their careers. Um, some do it successfully, some do it unsuccessfully, um, and others it just takes them a really long time. And so I'm interested. You know, I don't know if you've ever thought about it, kind of what um, sort of skills or, or um, you know, again, sort of support measures um, have really contributed to your success in doing this. Yeah, there there are several. Um, you raised uh, the topic of mentors and um, I have been incredibly lucky to have um, a mentor in my legal career who um, has working for him, I have been able to grow and stretch myself um, because he makes sure, he has made sure over the course of my legal career that um, I was in the right rooms and that I was getting the right opportunities early on. So my suggestion would be for any long, young lawyer is um, to try to find that mentor, um, someone who will take you along the path and expose you to the right, uh, the right situations, the right work um, early in your career. And if you aren't able to find that person, I would honestly say consider a change, consider some a change that would allow you to find the person who will, will, uh, will think about giving you those opportunities. Um, that change might be needing to change to a different law firm or a different business, or it just might mean you need to ask, ask somebody for those opportunities, raise it with your, the folks, the partners you're working with, um, because that has been so important, so invaluable for me. 
And then I think I go back to the theme of um, willing to take risks. Um, you know, I, I took a big risk by taking a large pay cut and going to MailChimp, um, leaving the law firm life where I was on the partnership track and going to MailChimp. And then I took another risk when I was uh, willing to pivot a bit and uh, do HR for a few years. Um, and so I would say that the willingness to stretch yourself there, take a few risks, know that a career isn't necessarily a well-planned path. Um, those are those two items have really, really helped me. This is great. This is great advice, um, especially the you know the piece about getting the mentorship. Um, I talk to young associates regularly who, you know, maybe they've got a nice situation. They're being paid well. The work is good. Um, you know, but perhaps they don't have the opportunity to have someone who is really aggressively taking them under their wing, um, you know, encouraging them to stretch, um, you know, and, and that discomfort <laughs> in stretching and taking on something that you're not 100% sure that you really can, um, it's how you grow and you, you know, arrive at the sort of station that Alish is at uh, in your career that you're at in your career. So it's like, you know, one of my mentors, you know, says something like, you know, in order to do anything, whether it's lose weight or, you know, become a better public speaker or, um, you know, grow with an attorney or grow in your profession, you have to do something that makes you feel uncomfortable. He says, this is why they call it growing pains, right? Uh, they don't say, call it like growing fun or growing enjoyment. <laughs> they call it growing pains. Um, and I think the ability to embrace that discomfort um, is what is what allows for the growth. Speaking of growth, um, MailChimp, your company, was established in 2001 in Atlanta and now has offices in Brooklyn, Oakland, Vancouver, London, Santa Monica. The company has grown to 1,200 plus employees. It was recently inquired by Intuit, um, the global technology platform that makes TurboTax, QuickBooks, Mint, and Credit Karma. Um, how has that, you know, Again, meteoric growth, uh, you know, in a relatively short period of time, um, this little startup has, has become a massive thing. How has the growth of the business impacted you, um, either per personally or professionally? Um, I think joining a growing business that was at this huge point in their scale up journey um, really gave me incredible opportunity in my career. Um, so when I joined MailChimp um, as the second lawyer, there was no well-established career path for an attorney in the company. Um, there, there was very little um, instruction about exactly what I should be doing. The other lawyer and I, we both we we divided and we conquered and we tackled um, different things every day. And um, and so being able to go in and identify areas that of need, being go able to go in and solve problems for my colleagues, um, that has really just given me incredible opportunities in my career to grow and stretch and learn new things. Um, and it absolutely has been the right career path for me. Now I understand it's not the right career path for everyone because it also can be very uncomfortable career path. Um, with all of that opportunity that I had, I also had almost no direction. So I, I couldn't sit in MailChimp and know when my next promotion was coming and know what the next stage in my career would be. Um, I, I had no idea what it would necessarily take to get from the level I was currently at to the next level in my career. And you have to sit with a bit of that discomfort when you're in um, a, a scale up company like MailChimp um, was at the time. And I completely empathize that for some lawyers, um, a preferable career path might be 
with a um, company, an in-house career path might be with a company that has a more structured legal department that um, has more well-defined roles and expectations. And you come into a certain position and there is a well-laid out path for you to know what it's going to take to get the promotion to the next level. Um, you know exactly what your job works on day to day and maybe what your colleagues are responsible for versus what you're responsible for. So there's very two different, very different types of in-house positions in those aspects. Um, I personally prefer to sit in the discomfort and um, have the opportunity to grow and try new things. Um, but the other career path is 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 absolutely equal and equally imp as important and is out there and available for other attorneys too. Indeed, indeed, which is, you know, sort of interesting in a prior conversation in which you said, um, you know, that you, you said to me something to the effect of uh, that you actually are not a risk taker, that you tend to be, um, I, I guess I would, looking from the outside in, I disagree, <laughs> um, just in the sense that, like, you know, your career is how you make your money, it's how you eat, it's how you pay for your car and the gas in your car and keep the lights on in your house and that sort of thing. Um, and yet, you've tolerated a great deal of discomfort, if you will, um, growing pains over the course of your career. And I wondered if there were any, um, you know, formative experiences, uh, things that you experienced younger in your life before you became a lawyer that helped to inform that strong tolerance for <laughs> discomfort um, and, and and not sharing, sh being sure what the next step is and not being, you know, kind of having to take a leap of faith? Oh, that's a, that's an excellent question. Um, uh, I, I have to say, you know, I, I moved to Georgia when I was eight years old from Canada and um, I grew up with a mother who is, is from Ireland. And so I think when we, we moved here initially, um, we moved to a small town in Georgia and I didn't necessarily fit in and I didn't know how to navigate um, the social norms of the South. Um, I certainly wasn't used to saying yes ma'am and no sir to adults. Um, my mother didn't know how to help me navigate that because she never grew up um, with those rules and neither did my father. He's, he's from the north. Um, and so perhaps perhaps in my younger my younger days um, uh, starting as an outsider and learning the norms and learning to fit in um, ha has helped me. But overall, I have to say that um, it's not comfortable for me, right? <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't sit in this discomfort and and like it um, yes. all the yes. time. <laughs> yes. Yes. It is. It's it's something you you learn to live with over time for sure. Um, and I think it is a muscle that you build um, with with time and experience. Um, you learn to sit in the discomfort a little bit more. But I certainly um, I certainly struggle sometimes to take those risks. I uh, over, I'm guilty of overthinking. Um, uh, just as probably almost every lawyer is. <laughs> and uh, so it, it, it takes time, it takes effort, it takes muscle building um, to get to that place. Definitely, definitely. And I think too, you know, in reflecting on your path, you know, one of the other things you told me was that uh, your first office at MailChimp was a storage closet, um, which makes me laugh. I mean, I just, you guys are in the process of like building your own building <laughs> right now, but you know, the humble beginnings, right? Um, and, you know, it also takes a little bit of um, humility, I think. It's like this quiet confidence plus, plus humility because, you know, there are those folks out there who have enjoyed the trappings of big law and they have, you know, an assistant and someone to do this for them and to make their copies and fancy art on the walls. And, you know, here you go from that to um, being in a storage closet. Um, and so I think too that, you know, it, it seems like that scrappiness, um, you know, from, from that formative experience and that, you know, ability to be 
you know, humble and sort of realize, okay, I'm a stranger in a strange land. I need to figure out what are the the ways of these people. Um, you know, is is that that's a transferable skill set, and I and I, I think that's great. Um, I'm so glad you brought that up, Rebecca. It, it's so true, um, right? I I think from the outside in, sometimes we look at others' careers and we think they're um, successful and glamorous and sexy and. Um, yeah, I, I will tell anyone any day when I when I joined MailChimp, um, uh, I was put in a storage closet and <laughs> like look, push the brooms away and <laughs> make room for uh, a computer. <laughs> absolutely. There there was a roach in the corner that I picked up on my first day. And I, I had come from I had come from a prestigious law firm where I had a beautiful office that overlooked Piedmont Park and here in Atlanta and um, I had helpings of an assistant and I had a break room full of coffee and all of those luxuries and um, and I had that prestigious title on my resume and um, I you know again it's it it wasn't always. It was. It hasn't always been glamorous. Um, I. I had to take that risk and definitely swallow some humility there. Um, but it was. It turned out for the best. I love it. it complete with a welcome roach. That's just awesome. <laughs> it just, the story gets better every time you tell it, Amish. I love, I love it. I think this is great. Not my have we. We have come a, a long way. Well, um, the last few years have been extremely difficult for. A lot of people um, due to COVID, um, the death of George Floyd, the Black, Black Lives um, Matter movement, and a host of other world events. Um, what advice would you give to newly minted attorneys who maybe not have experienced this kind of tumult in their professional and personal lives before, who you know entered the workforce post uh, Great Recession? Um, I think the main advice I would give them is to um, re remember that everyone's career path is different. Um, and so where you're starting doesn't necessarily dictate where you'll end up. Uh, where you are right now isn't necessarily going to set the course for the rest of your career. Um, there are a lot of opportunities out there to try your hand at different things. And if that different thing doesn't work out for you, you can often return to what you were originally doing, or um, you can move on and build up to the next, the next thing that's out there for you. So my main advice for young lawyers is there isn't one career path in law. Um, you don't necessarily have to enter into the big law firm and do the partnership track, um, although that is obviously a, a very good career path for a lot of people. If it isn't right for you, if it isn't what you're able to get at this point in your career, if it isn't working for you at this point in your career, there are other opportunities. And a career path doesn't always have to be up, up, up. Um, sometimes we move to the side, sometimes we move down to move up again. Um, and so my advice, advice for young lawyers is um, recognize that, accept that, and um, go with the flow and you'll figure it out. That's great. Wonderful advice. Well, Eilish, thank you so much for giving me your time and sharing your experiences with our listeners today. I know they will find them valuable as I have found your story valuable and I sincerely appreciate your time. Thank you for listening to Bouncing Back, Resilience for Lawyers. Join us next time for another story about thriving after overcoming challenges. You can find Bouncing Back and other programming for lawyers on MLA's Legal Talk Network.